So this is the nine responsibilities course. And it helps us to understand that we have nine very perfectly given abilities to respond to all types of situations that we may receive in our life. And when we do that, we begin to understand that really everything in our life, everything in our world, and everything in the lives of people who are near and dear to us, and even people who we don't know, is being co-created. We are all co-creating it together. It's not that we have to wake up to co-creating. We have to only wake up to knowing that we are co-creating. And that is why I have given it this side, uh, the tagline of awaken your co-creator consciousness. And the name of my company I've called Co-Creator Circle. If you can see in the logo, there, it, this is the way that Gaia can be picturized. And Gaia is often called Mother Earth with all beings, everyone and everything that live in her and on her and within her. And even though it's a circle, the circle is never closed. The circle is always complete, but also always open. What I really see when I look at this logo is actually a spiral because it is something that helps us to keep changing and growing and, uh, and evolving and journeying together. When we say together, it means whether or not we are aware, we are all as humanity and all as all the living beings and everything on earth, which is changing. We are always uh, changing and evolving and transforming together. We, even when we are a hermit, in fact, hermits are best uh, hermit mode is the best way to connect to everyone, you know, because there's no uh, uh, distractions of lower kind of energies. So uh, that is, that's why uh, behind the co-creator circle, you see an aspect of the flower of life. You may have heard of the geometric figure, the sacred geometry, the flower of life. This one is the seed of life and everything in the nine responsibilities course will keep taking us through the flower of life. The nine responsibilities course is based on, um, uh, on a course by Tavita K. Grant. She, uh, she feels that she channels the course. It just came to her a lot of information, many meditations, many tools and many um, uh, many ways of uh, and yet one blueprint one blueprint of nine ways or nine things that we have which can be called our responsibilities she always thought of them as abilities to respond but she thought that she would name it just the simple word which we know which is responsibility it's also based on some glimpses that I will give of a, a theory called Tri-Origin Theory by Professor Park Ji Wu. Uh, also by a course which I'm, uh, or I am right now co-creating, but there's a book called Focus on Perspective. And, and the course content is also interaction. The interaction that comes through all of us uh, as we are going through the course is very powerful and it really uh, helps us to understand um, and, to, and to awaken together. So when we think of responsibilities, how do you feel? If you want, you can say it or you can write it in the chat. When the word responsibility is, when you, when you encounter it, I have nine responsibilities. How do you feel? Can you put in the chat?
Yeah. Uh, yeah. As you said, it feels like pressure. Uh, and it makes me feel, oh my gosh, I have nine things that I'm responsible for. What are they? So when you feel pressure, think of it as being at the base of a mountain. You don't know what's on the top. You can't see around the mountain. You can't see any anything except whatever is in front of us. And it can also feel as if the weight of the whole mountain is on us as if we are Atlas, you know, carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. And isn't it in a way true? Because especially as we grow older uh, and, and we are at a certain age, there are certain ages in our life when we just feel responsible for everything. I also know that uh, in, in my case, uh, I, I encountered a very wonderful being and I asked him, uh, he, he's a guru, but he's the guru of the kind who doesn't have followers. These are the sages who are in the mountain, always in the form of uh, samadhi, which is a very deep form of meditation. They don't seek anything outwardly. And yet he had to come and give us a certain message, which also I'll bring into the course later on. And, and when I asked him, can you give me a message for myself? And he told me, uh, no, I have no message for you. Everything's fine. And I, all I want you to do is just to spread, uh, spread the messages that I've, a message that I've given you. Um, and then I said, no, I, want, I really want you to tell me something. What, what lesson do, do you want to give me? And he said, forgive yourself. That's all I want to tell you. And I thought, forgive myself? What have I done? Have I done something wrong? And then I kept thinking, and then I watched myself. I found myself watching myself without even realizing. And I realized that since my childhood, every time anything happened around me, especially if it was wrong or unpleasant or something bad, like I would always feel responsible as if it was I who had done it. And to the extent that my uh, friends in college said, Minakshi, you're not God. It, this is your God complex, thinking you're responsible for everything. I've talked to people who also feel that sense, something within us that makes us feel, oh, I could have present, prevented this person from falling. I could have done something to help them to wake up, something like that. And this could be, a general form of responsibility that we feel, or it could really be the seed of co-creation that we know that we have within us. As we go deeper into this, we will see the meaning of what they say, that when a butterfly flaps in one part of, uh, flaps of wings in one part of the world, there can be a hurricane in, an, an, in another part. But whatever, however we experience it, the word responsibility can make us feel uh, not really able to do. You're not really doing anything. You just felt responsible. But when we start seeing that all these responsibilities are abilities to respond, then it's like being on top of the mountain. You're in the, at the peak. You, can, you have a wide vista in front of you. You can see different, different reasons why something happened. You can see something as it is happening. And then you can also help them by the blueprints that we are going to go, go into. You, 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 we can help ourselves and we can help people around us. We start, to see, we start to see what are the different abilities that we actually do have to respond. Is there anything that you'd like to say right now? If there's any um, thing, you can put it in the chat at any time, either a question or if you have a uh, comment. So these are the nine responsibilities by Tavita Grant. The way that she has given them is actually inside. Some of the images I have interpo interspersed and interposed on them so that you will be actually able to uh, to understand them even better. So around the seed of life, the seed of life is six different circles. There is also a, a, 
a silver circle and there is a golden circle. And we'll see what is this golden triangle. So these are the nine responsibilities. And as I'm going to say them, if you like, you can also say them to yourself. I am responsible for what I think. I am responsible for what I say. I am responsible for what I do. And these form the golden triangle of my abilities to respond. I am responsible for my health. I am responsible for right relationships. I am responsible for my enlightenment. I am responsible for the I that I am. I am responsible for service. I am responsible for co-creation. And these are my nine responsibilities based on the blueprint that Davita Grant was able to visualize. The ninth one is I am responsible for unity and co-creation, service and unity. They're all connected very beautifully with one another. So if you can, just wherever you are, let's say these nine responsibilities principles together because it helps us to make them even deeper into our consciousness. And where it says you, let's say the word I. Where What I think can make my day or throw my off balance along the way. What I say lingers on and has power to heal or harm. So watch my words and I can give them charm. What I do and how I act generates energy that creates my future tracks care for my health in all the right ways so I can nourish it wisely to live long, productive days. I keep right relationships in all that I do so pleasure and happiness will come to me. Enlightenment is the key to the heart. The purpose and the quest are not far apart. Through service, we render our journey with love by knowing the process of the above. In unity, the eternal flame burns bright and brings peace of the dove, harmony and new sight. In all that I am and all that I be, responsibility for me rests solely at my feet. So in, this, in the class, we sometimes just say it together. And it sort of helps us to get into the mode of, you know, they are such simple words and yet they, I don't know how you feel, but when I say, say them, it feels as if the world is opening up for me. My own life is opening up for me. And whenever I felt that something in the world is affecting me, I realized that there's a, there is a certain process by which that comes to me and I can, I, I can do something to help it. So we now take a bit of a break. And this is the time in which you will be saying, doing writing. Yes, Lynn, I know you like the eye perspective and I was thinking of you. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm also seeing that this is a way in which... Uh, uh, the whole consciousness changes. If you see teachers, usually they will say you and not I and not we. Very pe Many people are not comfortable with we. I'm very much in the we perspective and I was in a writer's group and they used to say, don't say we, say I, but I can't think like that. So uh, each of us has a different uh, consciousness and it's beautiful to see each one's consciousness. So uh, you see these five shapes. In any order that comes to you without thinking, please draw them for yourself.
when you've drawn, please let me know in the chat. Okay, I'm John. This is a very simple exercise of five shapes which are basic and uh, universal. They, they don't require any particular explanation. And this is something that helps us to see what really happens when we do the nine responsibilities course. Because this course is not only about learning something, but it really transforms. Uh, we all have something called an energy signature. You know, when you think of someone, there's a sense you get about them. There's a sense. Something that may make you smile, something that may make you feel power, something that may make you feel mm, not really, not, not where I want to be, etc. So that is our energy signature. And uh, this changes. And how will we know that it has changed? By just doing this simple exercise, just drawing these five simple shapes. The, this is not directly from the nine responsibilities book. This is from uh, from other, uh, this is something that's out there. And in the course, I give you the way in which to use it so that even if you're a teacher or coach or uh, anything else that you are doing, if you want, you can use this tool for your, for your students or for, for yourself. Like I've done it again, because it keeps showing us how our energy signature or how our consciousness, where it is at any given time. So whatever shape you have put in position one tells you where you think you are at this moment. And this it's very good to see it along with um, your strengths, which is whatever there is in position two, where you actually are, which is position three. So when you juxtapose the shape you have put in position one and three, it gives you a very nice insight. Then uh, what are your strengths? And five are what is your old unfinished business? This also helps to be seen together. And uh, together, all of it shows what your motivation is. So uh, I'll just give you a, let me show that to you for a minute. Because these are the things along with the course because uh, that you'll keep getting, you know? Can you, you can't see my screen right now, right? Okay, let me show it. Have you come across this before? Okay, so this is the, it's called the preferential shapes test and you will, you also get this, uh, you receive it. So just to give an example, where you think you are, right? Let's say if if you have in your first, the circle, then it says that this is where you think you are. If you had a spiral, this is where it says that you are. If you had a triangle, then it means that you are uh, giving more importance right now to your goals and dreams, etc. So just seeing this first one, if you want, you can take a screenshot and you will see where you think you are. And then I will show you the third one and you can see where you are. If you can just take a screenshot, then you'll be able to do this self-study for yourself. Okay. Were you able to take take your thing? Okay. So we go back to the nine responsibilities. 
So what is the importance therefore of studying the five, the nine responsibilities? It is, it enlarges the canvas of our life. We see that our own activities and even the events that happen, not just in, not even what is directly impacting me, but even what I'm reading about, everything we begin to see in a, under a very wide uh, uh, lens. You know, when uh, in, uh, we are all in the US, so when 9-11 took place, I remember someone telling me, uh, and we live in Miami, so nothing had directly happened here. And someone said, I'm going to leave this country because now it's dangerous and it's unsafe and I'm not going to live here. So I said, uh, let's just think about it in, in another way also. How has your life been directly impacted, number one? Where do you think you can go where you feel that you will be safe? Because if the feeling of uh, being unsafe is inside you and the feeling that I should not be in places where there is danger is inside us, we will carry that wherever we go. So what needs to change is something. I didn't teach it to them like that at all. We just were having a conversation because it was a dinner with friends. But I started to see how important it is not only to know what's happening in the world, but also to know what's happening in our own inner world. How are we responding? How are we reacting? So that's another thing I start seeing when we do the nine responsibilities course or any course of mindfulness and, and self-study that we our reaction changes. When I see that my first reaction when I see a gray hair is wonder and delight. And it is in my case, when I see, oh, wow, this, this kind of a thing happens in life. I, I go to sleep, I'm one person and I wake up and without my doing anything directly, suddenly my own body, which I think is my body has changed. Something has happened to it. So our reaction starts changing even to things which are not really under my control. I don't think I can direct any hair of my head to become gray or not to gray. And yet the choices I'm making and, the, and that we are making uh, about eating and, and where we live and, and so many other things must be affecting. And of course the genetic structure, so many things must be affecting what's happening in the world. So the whole world is not only are we co-creating the world, but the world is co-creating each one of us. So it's really very beautiful. Who's painting here? Is the painter painting the painting or the painting painting the painter? You know, it's just, it's really very beautiful to think about how it is that everything happens and changes in our life. And one of the stories, in my book, Focus on Perspective, which is which I have referenced. Um, Focus on Perspective, The it's right now a book in book form, but I'm also going to be creating a separate course for it. But I've brought parts of it in this course. Uh, it shows us how we can fine tune our perspective exactly and focus just like we, we change the camera. If you're looking at the sun and you change your, if this is the, if this is, let's say the camera lens and I move it here, there, up, down, everything changes. If I, if you place a finger in, in front of your nose and you close your left eye, what you're seeing changes. If, if just look at the computer and it, and the words in it and something, they'll move just because one eye or the other eye is looking. So perspective keeps changing. Every, nothing is fixed in this world. And yet we say, I've made up my mind and this is the only way to look at life. This is it, this is the right way, this is the wrong way. So there's one book, one story, which you may have heard of called The Blind Men and the Elephant. And we had heard about it and, and it shows here very, uh, you know, very clearly that they're blindfolded people, they're touching an elephant and each of them is saying it's something else. And each of them is very sure that what they think is right. 
and I, when I read the story, I loved it from my childhood. But suddenly one day I said, you know, there's another way to do it. First, we have to recognize that we don't know a lot of the things in our life. If we go with thinking, this is it, now I know it. Like even when I'm teaching this course or I'm offering it or whatever, can I say I know this fully? Then I've stopped evolving, I've stopped growing, I've, I've stopped living that part of my life. What if I think maybe if all, all these blind people or all of them had a blindfolded people had a conference and they all shared their points of view, then they would see the whole picture. When we are sitting in a circle, each of us is seeing something else. Right now, we are in a circle. You're looking at me. I'm looking at the, at, at the screen or if I, I'm looking at you. So each of us, even though we are in the same space, is having a completely different experience, a different viewpoint. And when we bring it together, then we start evolving the whole. The wholeness starts happening when we are able to, uh, to come together and share. And after that, I thought something else. What if I'm alone and I need to, and I have understood that I don't know what's happening in any situation. Can't I circle the situation? Can't I see it from different perspectives? Just like they say, walk, uh, walk in another man's shoes if you, if you want to understand that person. I can walk in the shoes of different people. I can keep changing my mind. I can keep looking at it in a different way. For example, I can think, okay, this is who I think I am. How does, how does my brother think of me? How does my sister think of me? What does my husband think of me? What, do, what does this student think of me? What does my teacher think of me? And if I can just watch it and put it together, here I'm not accepting, not accepting, I'm just watching. When we just watch, and we are not trying to judge, we are not trying to accept or not accept, we are just watching. So much can come to us. And from that, this, this book of focus and perspective has grown. And many things of it will keep coming into uh, the course. So that's why this is something that I know sounds, really, is it true? But it really does change the energy signature and how we will know are by the tools that we will be given and which we will be using. So one of the tools is, which I've already mentioned, our reaction. We'll start reacting when you're first, our reactions are not under our control, but they come out from our consciousness. So for example, I hear something and I say, oh, oh no, what if this happens to me? And suddenly, uh, like when we did Reiki, when I was attuned to Reiki, I realized now when I go, uh, when I'm driving and I see an accident, earlier I used to say, oh no, I used to say, oh, thank God it's not me, you know, I, I would have those. And now I would say, ah, Reiki, just send, uh, just send your, 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 a good vibration to the situation. So your, my first reaction had changed. And I realized it's because of another consciousness, another skill, another tool, which I now have, another vision that now has developed. Then a feeling, you know? How do you feel when you hear something? When, when something happens to you, when my roof is not working and I, don't have the, and, and, and I don't have the money to fix it, what can I do? There are many things I can, I can do. And, and I really feel it's, it's, uh, it's staying up because I keep telling the angels, this is your thing. Please just keep it going till I can afford to keep it, uh, to have it repaired in this. And we live in a hurricane zone. Or I can say, um, I can make an intention. And I can say, maybe what I'm supposed to be doing is uh, just ask for the money to repair the roof. So many ways. We have so many abilities to respond. And what I'm explaining right now is just the thought. How I can change my thought to 
to affect the actions that I will take, the intentions that I will have, and the feeling that I will have. Now, this one, muscle testing, uh, we're going to do right now. So let's, uh, I'm going to pause the recording for a minute. But actually, first, I'll just say something and then I'll pause it. Have you all done muscle testing? If you have, just raise your hand. Okay, you haven't. You know, our muscles of our body, they are not fully under our control. Uh, they are uh, part of the autonomic nervous system. So they can be under our control, but they're not, they not fully under our control. We can't control our heart uh, directly, except with mindfulness practices, et cetera, or feeling some away. But so we can use our muscles to show us how we are really feeling and what we really want and what uh, we really think is good for us, you know? So shall I have a, a, a coffee or shall I have a tea? Even I tell people, do it for this course. Should I do this course right now or not do this course right now? Because see, whatever I, I, I give to the world, I feel whoever's meant to be here is going to be here, you know, because when you receive something powerful, and this is very powerful, is it the right time to receive it? Are you in the right frame? Will you be able to use it in the right way, etc.? Okay, so there are many ways of muscle testing. One simple way, but the most important thing is you be relaxed and don't try to control and don't let your brain and your, your thought process interfere with the muscle. So, so start with a simple thing of our name. So if I say I am Minakshi, my name is Minakshi. Suppose I say that and I'm in a very relaxed way, I'm keeping my muscles. So not hard, high and low. Okay. And then I, I, I try to remove the two. I, and the, this is just gentle. Okay. And I try to remove. Now, what will happen is I'll feel if it is true, if it is true, then my muscles will you see what happens. Will, will they open or will they not open? And if it is true, what do you think? Either it will open or it will not open. What do you think your muscles will do when they say yes? They will be strong. And so this will not be able to open them. Even though I'm, I'm not pressing them, I'm just softly. So my name is Minakshi. My muscle is strong. When I say the truth to myself, then I'm strong. My name is Anne-Marie. You see, I can't convince myself. Now I can do it for something I really don't know, you know? Should I have the cup of coffee that my daughter made for me? Because maybe it's bad for me. People, because you'll hear so many things in the world. Coffee is good for you, it's bad for you. This one's good, this one. What's the right thing for me? And so I can say, okay, I'm feeling strong because what I'm seeing, when I eat or drink something, I eat or drink the emotion with which it's given to me. So it doesn't matter to me what it is. And to me, this is the connection that my daughter has with me. You know, lovingly in the morning, even if she's uh, half a asleep, you cannot speak to her. I mean, you can, she will not be rude, but you know that she would rather not speak. But she will lovingly make the cup of coffee and give it to me wherever I am, you know? So what I'm having is that love. It connects me to my mother who used to give me milk with coffee because otherwise I wouldn't drink milk, you know? So see, just look at the perspective with what you do, everything, and it'll explain why this coffee is good for me. I'm drinking love. And uh, did it work for you? See if it's working for you. And I'm going to pause for a minute, the recording. So from, let me just show that again, because I didn't, oh, I don't know if I can or can't. Yeah, that um, each week we are going to go on one of the circles of the flower of, of the seed of life, which is a part of the flower of life. 
and um, and after we have gone over the whole one, we'll it's uh, we we each in each session we will also have a meditation. So so there is a tool that's given to us or a skill. There's a, a some sort of mindfulness practice. There is interaction uh, with certain exercises, and we get information from different places. You know from uh, what humanity has created, what humanity has co-created. There's so much information in the world. And uh, right now I have not scheduled the next sessions because I want to make it after. That's why I like the small classes because it's, a, you know, it's a nine sessions, nine weeks. So I want to make sure that it's for the people who sign up and then we can decide on the dates. And um, that's why I've not scheduled it yet. So each of each time you will get tools which are physical, mental, and metaphysical. By metaphysical, we are using the aspect of the brain that we usually don't use. Scientists tell us, I mean, so I've heard, I sometimes uh, a different percentage, that we use just a fraction of our brain. In other words, we are using, the, the whole brain is working all the time, but we are aware of very little. Not only uh, is there the conscious, the subconscious and the unconscious, but the, but there's also the aspect that the unconscious is working. It's not just something static, which is just there. The brain is working, it's interconnecting, it's doing many things. It doesn't, it, it's a wave. So if there are waves, the waves don't just stop at whatever is my physical body. The waves are somewhere. That's why I know that in my home or in any place where there is meditations or there's a higher level kind, a, a, a high vibration kind of activity, you start seeing the peacefulness around. You start seeing everything changing without people knowing that you're doing anything. There was a hurricane in, uh, uh, in Miami a few years ago and somebody told me, Oh, Minakshi, no wonder your neighborhood, nothing really happened to it because there was lots of stuff happening everywhere. Because, because of you. I said, because of me? Yeah. She didn't know. She never came for any circle. And it's not me. It's because everyone who comes here, you know? So you'll start seeing, that is metaphysical. I know that all of us already know these things, but I'm just bringing it to, the attention of how in our own personal lives we really start seeing this. It's really amazing and wonderful how um, we can get all these tools. So in the course, you actually get or receive certain uh, uh, tools. You also see the wholeness of who we are from the tri-origin perspective. Tri-origin is a theory that was discovered by Professor Park ji -woo. He named it tri-origin. But he said, this is the way the universe is created. And so I just bring, it's a huge theory. I just bring pieces which will help us in every, uh, for, for each of the nine responsibilities. So for example, this is our tri-origin of our own personal self. We have the I, which is the personal life, which gives us an, uh, a force or an energy, which is hetero which can change, it is newness, you, it is, it is uh, expansion, you can uh, go in any direction, you know? And we, we get that kind of energy when we focus on the I being that we are. But the I being, that is the self, the person that we are, is also affected by the family life and also influences the family life. Families have usually, well, they share DNA, they may share a name, they may share a, 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 they may share a home, they may share a culture, um, ways of eating, ways of being, memory, so many things. So family is similarity and it gives you the Im image, the sorry, the force, uh, which is called the homo force, the contraction, the, the, the organizing force, the force that helps us to see that we are similar to others. Here we are individual, unique, separate, different. And here we are also the same. 
Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the phrase by Clacon and Murray, where they said, each person is in some ways like all other beings, uh, like some other beings and like no other beings. So each of us has these kinds of commonalities and uniqueness. And so then uh, this uh, expansion and this contraction is, is like, in a way, they fight one another. You know, they, they cannot, uh, they have to keep harmonizing with one another. And when they are in harmony and everything is together, then comes the outer life the new, and gives us the neutral energy, the neutral force, which helps us to interact with people around us, whether it is physical interaction, a mind interaction, a thought interaction, it doesn't matter. But it is the, the feeling that, yes, we are part of a larger community. We live in this world. And it is because of this energy, the neutral force, that this whole world has come into being. And um, internally, something which is just, it doesn't move. And yet it affects, it, it, it is glimpsed through each of these is our spirit, the being, the soul, whatever we want to call it. And that, that gives us the neutral. And you also see how it is in our fingers and there's, there's many aspects that, that come. And, and you know, whatever comes is according to the interaction and to whatever is happening um, as we are talking. Um, we, we talked about focus on perspective and this is how it is. You know, when you're, when you're disturbed, uh, and you don't know what I'm supposed to do, I'm, I'm troubled, the this, this situation is bothering and troubling me, then we can widen our perspective and step back and see a bigger picture. But if we are seeing too many things, oh my gosh, I can do this. I want to become healthy. I can do strength training. I can walk. I can do yoga. What should I do? That's when we focus and say, what is available to me easily right now? Let me just do that because that must be the thing that is right for me. So in simple ways, by just transforming our focus uh, and changing our perspective, we can solve so many of our life confusions and questions. So this is a beautiful thought and we are going to almost end with this. The universe supports us in what we want to create. Is this something that we think is true or not? Like Einstein said, the, one of the first decisions we have to make in our life is, is this universe a friendly place? And I think of it in a very logical way. If I think it's an unfriendly place, then the way I am, I don't want to be. I would rather just be nothing nothingness if it's an unfriendly place so because it helps me to live in this world and to act in this world i will think that this universe is a friendly place then i know that whatever's coming my way is good for me is right for me even a problem that's coming my way is right for me and because of this i have seen the wonder of the most difficult times in my life. Emotional, dis emotional things that were traumatic when they happened, everything in my life, it has been able to be helped because I was able to see that, yes, there was, right now I can't see it, but I know that this is also for my benefit, you know? And this way you, we start seeing, why is this happening in the world right now? Okay, maybe there's a lot of negativity that was hiding. It was going to become like disease in the world. Now we are seeing it, but it's because it is leaving. Only when something sees the light of day can it just disappear. Otherwise it, otherwise it seems more powerful. I don't want to name politics, but also there used to be a Cold War where everyone thought that the other side was more powerful and had more weapons than in reality they had. And when the, the Cold War was over, they saw, oh, okay, they were not really so powerful after all. So when things are hidden, they seem more powerful than they actually may be. Uh, so this is the way we are creating every moment of our life. We create through our thought process. 
we create through our actions, we create through all those ways in which um, we have seen our parts of the nine responsibilities. So this is where the uh, session ends of the presentation. Um, I see that I've gone a little bit beyond the time that we had allocated, but we also started a little late. I can pause the recording now. <laughs>